Hi, welcome back to Team Woolly Sheep Reviews. Sorry there's been a bit of a, a gap between posts, but uh, things haven't been going my way with some of these videos. So I've got a few videos lined up and they're incomplete. Anyway, I won't go into that. What I have got is this. You may remember it, it was the 220 frame that I bought from eBay. It's a uh, four mil arms and i got to be honest, I've flown it a few times and it handles really nice. It's very light and it fly, it floats, it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, I kind of like flying this and it's, it's something different. The only thing is, everything's exposed, everything's outside and I quite fancied this. Now this is the uh, race pod by Luminaire. This is for the uh, um, for the genuine article, right? But I'm pretty sure that this will fit on there. What we do, we take off the carbon frame, the carbon top, and everything sits inside there. This sits on top, so you've got a nice protective. This is quite very durable. I don't think this is going to break uh, easy. You could probably drive a car over this. So this is quite strong. It's in white, you know I like white. I can have my Asbo stickers on there. Um, so I'm gonna transfer this onto this. I'm not gonna bore you to death by showing you how I strip that out and put that on and whatever. I might show a few photographs, but I'm gonna put this on there. This is a direct replacement for all the carbon, so I need to uh, strip it all out. But what I've done is because it's quite a, a, a compact sandwich, I didn't like the VTX up on the top, uh, I bought this, which is a flight control board from FreeSky. It's the one with the XSR receiver built in. Mm, I'm a bit wary. It's the F3 Evo board and it's got the XSR built in. So the combination is good. It's not far off what I've got in here. So, but it's all on one board, so I should be able to do it. I haven't gone mad and got the OSD and all the other nonsense because I've had some bad reports. But this is the basic uh, XSR SBUS receiver stuck on top of the F3 Evo board, so it should be good. However, the instructions were pretty crap. i got to be honest, you look at it and you think, I haven't got a clue how to connect it. Now, I've done quite a few quads and I should know things off by heart by now. However, this F3 Evo board was a little bit different. First of all, it's got SV power. SV power. Why SV? I don't know. But anyway, SV, I, I assume, is service voltage, maybe. But basically, it's the 5 volt supply in. So SV power is not your battery voltage, it is your five volt supply. So from your um, speed controller, ESC four in one or your five volt back, that's where it goes in. There. So don't make that mistake. The VBAT connections, as everybody would know, which is your flight battery, um, go on the lower connections there. So be careful. And they are marked ground, current sensor and V battery. So it's the ground of V battery is where I'm going to take my battery. The buzzer's going in the top. Uh, I've got a six pin output socket there. Now some of the four in one controllers use the same type of socket. And the first three connections was POS, NEG and, and signal wire. This is not the case. It's, it's motor one, two to six. So motor one through six is connected off the pin. There is no power supply wires go to go in that board you do you damage it so yeah it's quite simple no problem I'm gonna connect it in and uh, hopefully it'll be a good bit of kit I've got a new uh, VTX I'm gonna stick in there because my 25 milliwatt one is knackered yes knackered it works but I've got light flashing I don't yeah I'm not trusting it it's coming out and I'm gonna put a nice new VTX in there so I'm gonna get on with it
going to be bomb proof. Yeah, little antennas might get broken if you have a tumble. But yeah, really pleased with that. The flight controller was the Free Sky flight controller, and it comes complete with um, XSR, and this is the LBT uh, receiver built on. On the connections, You'll, see, you'll when you print this print this off, you'll see that your VBAT is on those connections there, and they give you a set of pins, which are about one mil distance far. The very finest pins, no plugs to go on them, just the pins. So what I decided to do is solder direct, but I had to put really fine wires and really fine solder in, and it was a pain in the ass. I gotta be honest, not good for your flight battery connections, a bit daft really, you want some sizable pads. So personally, that's a bit of a fail in uh, FreeSky. Um, no problems with the 5 volt power supply up there and the buzzer connection, no problem there. But this VBAT connection, no, I wasn't happy with that. Uh, it came with uh, Beta Flight version three. Now I don't know whether you're familiar with Beta Flight version three, but I powered up and the thing leapt off the floor and tried to kill me. Yes, it is bloody dangerous. Um, I didn't like beat of flight. I had to flash it. Now to flash it with beat of flight, you have to press the bootloader button. Pain in the bum. But bootloader button, they got actual physical button on there. So all you got to do, set it to to boot on on power up, and set get it all ready to go. It's the F3 um, SP Racing F3 Vo is the is the actual board and i flashed it no problem at all i'm now on 3.17 which i think is the latest one at the moment uh, i put that on there and it flies absolutely fantastic turned up the super rates um tend to like it a little bit snappier but yeah it's it's pretty much ready to go uh, it flies well you know on the stock pids i got a it, it seems pretty locked on now that i need to fly it outdoors because there ain't much room in here and it gets damn dangerous but yeah so pretty impressed flight controller is good now this this is tough plastic when i say tough plastic i could probably drive the car over that without any worries it is pretty bomb proof uh that's going to take a lot of knocks and spills the antenna was very close to the blade so i've had to to bend it i could have had a 90 or a 45 degree up, but you know what happens it gets snapped a nice cable tie on there it's solid bend it up job done it's free it's free it's out of the way these things like i said may break them but it, if they break them what's the worst that can happen they're not going to get chopped up they're not know any of the blades so they are basically cosmetic and a little bit of mechanical protection and they're easily replaced so what's wrong with that could glue them but then they when they snap off what are you going to do just leave them shoved in if they fall off they fall off so yeah as you can see i'm running the uh, race star motors i haven't spent much money i have got the old red bottoms which uh i may put on there if uh, these motors don't perform but to be honest i've had pretty good performance out of these pretty happy so yeah recommend that that is the um the race pod for the qav 220 xs this is the copy of the quav xs it's the stretch frame and yeah i bought it on ebay 18 pound bought the bought this from hobby rc for 12 pound and it came with that kit camera sits in there Got, you can adjust the camera position lovely lovely really pleased happy about that so like i said it uses the same fixings at the bottom what i have removed is this this is the the top um you might recognize it this basically was the top um obviously there's pillars there so all that's come off and replaced with and that that comes off that replaces it like i said these uh this qav frame matches quite well uh, all the holes are in the right place it doesn't overextend i know there was um there was a couple, uh, another copy frame out there that uh, the plastic case overextended, but no, this is almost an identical copy, I'm afraid. 
but uh, there you are it's four mil i measured it and it, uh, it yeah i gotta be honest it flies really nice and i'm really pleased with it so overall it's a big thumbs up yeah so can't wait to get this out there and fly it that's all from me so all i've got to say is go buy one and build it thank you very much